When I was seven years old, I uh, saw my uncle doing his homework. He was a, he was a student at the, at the University of New Orleans studying to be an engineer, and, and I asked him what this homework was. He said it was calculus. I said, well, what do you need that for? He said, oh, I'm studying to be an engineer. And I, I, and I, and I remember this conversation vividly. He remembers none of it. Um, I, I then asked him, well, what does an engineer do? And he says, well, engineers builds things, anything from cars to planes to boats to computers and you know, whatever else. I said, well, that's what I love doing. I, I want to be an engineer. And it just got into my head that, you know, that that's what I should do. And he immediately said, well, if you want to be an engineer, you should go to MIT. And then I remember literally saying, well, then I will go to MIT, not knowing what MIT was, where it was, what it stood for, anything. Uh, but it was just in the back of my mind. And then by the time I got to high school, it was still there. And at, at this point, I knew that it was, this, you know, it was a good engineering school up in you know, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, but then the more that I asked around, I realized, well, you know, this, this is going to be a, a, a pretty competitive thing, but I, you know, I did buckle down more with my studies. But then my junior year, when I was ready, you know, I sat down with my guidance counselor and he said, where are you going to apply? I said, I'm going to apply to MIT. And he said, where else are you going to apply? And I said, no, I think I'm just going to apply to MIT. And my guidance counselor said, well, do you realize that no one from our high school has ever gotten into MIT, that there's about five people in our state, I was in Louisiana, who get in every year. Um, maybe you should, you know, you have a shot, but maybe you should apply a few other places. And at first I was a little dismissed. I was like, no, if I don't get in, I'll just wait a year and I'll apply again. And he's like, no, no, you really should apply to, to, more, to more places. And so my process was pretty imperfect. I, I said, okay, well, let's see. Um, locally, I, I grew up in New Orleans. Uh, there's Tulane, very good school in New Orleans. Uh, let me apply there. Um, I, my sister was at Brown, another excellent school. I said, let me apply there. That's where my sister is. And then uh, several of the really good students from my high school the last several years had gone to Rice in Houston, um, which also was a very good engineering school. And so I said, well, I'll, I'll apply to Rice as well. And, you know, lucky for me with this kind of ad hoc process, just knowing who I knew, it did work out, you know, obviously I, I got into MIT eventually, you know, I, or I got into MIT, and so that worked out. But I think in hindsight, I would have done it a little bit differently. I probably would have broadened uh, the number of applications I, I put out there. Um, I probably would have put, ex done more research on, well, what are all of the, you know, not just basing on what my uncle happened to tell me or what one or two friends happened to tell me. I probably should have done more research on what are all of the top engineering schools. I would have discovered that Stanford has an excellent engineering department. Princeton has an excellent engineering department. Cornell, Georgia Tech, I could go on and on and on. So it would probably make sense for me to apply to more schools and also to have more um, uh, kind of diversity in terms of how hard it might have uh, been to, uh, to get into the different schools. So, you know, if I was redoing it today, I probably would have applied to um, maybe maybe at least seven or seven or eight schools, especially because you've gotten even more even more competitive now. But um, yeah, that, that's how I had thought about it at the time.